Hello folks, I released two YouTube videos on flow approvals about five months ago. And these videos saw about close to 20,000 views on YouTube. I was one of the early ones who released information on this new solution and it seems like it's getting a lot of adoption in the Salesforce ecosystem. I have news for you now. First of all, I have a live course that I'm going to be offering for you to learn uh, the functionality of flow approvals. So to check out the information on that, check the description of this video and the comments down below. I'll provide links and information on the details. Now, the second news is I have collected a lot of feedback from the ecosystem, from the people who watched the video and played with the solution, that there are some gaps that they would like uh, to see filled. And I have built some workarounds that I want to share with you. I'm going to um, create follow-up videos, which will share with you some solutions that I have built to fill those gaps. Now, the first one is this one, which is going to show you how I built a reactive screen flow that I can use on the object record instead of a related list, because we don't really get the same related list functionality to see the history of approvals on the object record. Now, this reactive screen flow is going to show us all the approval submissions that happened before on the record and all the related information in separate data tables. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the video and dive into the solution. Let me show you how I built it. I'm on this test opportunity record and I want to show you how this works. Now, before I jump into this functionality, I want to remind you that I have a video on how you build uh, the new flow approvals uh, on my YouTube channel. And you may want to go back and watch that if you want to see how you build the approvals using the orchestration functionality. Now, this is about how you display the approval information, kind of like a related records functionality on your object record. So this video is going to be about that. Now, first of all, if you use the out of the box functionality, you actually get an approval trace component that you can add to your object record page. And this is what you see on that, right? So it's pretty good information. Uh, you can see the approval work item name. Uh, you can see who reviewed it, who it got assigned to, the comments, review date, and so on. But as you know, there are multiple records related to the approval process, and we don't really get to see all of them here. For that, I built a screen flow that I have placed on this approvals tab. And on this approval tab, now I can see that I have two approval submissions. These are two separate approvals that I have run. The first one is approved and the second one is rejected. It's kind of the other way around. Usually, typically what you will see is maybe the first one is rejected and the second one could be approved. But for testing purposes, let's ignore that. And you get to choose and click which one you want to work on automatically the most recent one is going to come selected. And once that's selected, the flow displays who the selected record submitter is, in this case, Andy Utkan, and then it's going to list all the approval work items on this data table and the approval submission detail records on the second data table. Now, let me just start by saying that this functionality is limited with uh, the out-of-the-box data table functionality in the sense that the out-of-the-box data table does not really display the record name in the lookup fields when you place them in a column, only record IDs. So that's why I have built this functionality over here to display the name of uh, the person who is the submitter. Uh, it's not really placed on the data table. It's actually placed right below that as a reactive text field. Now I get to choose the second record. And as soon as I choose the second record, I'm going to see the approval work item records and the approval submission detail records there. 
Uh, I did not really want to create additional fields on these records because I built actually an unprotected 2GP package for you to download these flows and you can install them in your orgs. I did not really want to uh, create uh, fields for you on your dev uh, org when you download this and install this. But what I would ideally do is I would actually add formula fields to these records to be able to display the record names in the lookups, like, you know, the approver, submitter, and all that information can be displayed here on separate columns as long as you add those as a formula field on your record. I have also checked the possibility of using unofficial SF data table component, but uh, as of the date of this video, unofficial SF data table component does not really support the approval submission object yet. So yeah, this is reactive. You can go back and forth. If you have three of them, you can actually choose amongst these and display all this information. Let me just show you the flows and walk you through how I built this. To achieve this functionality, you need to build two flows. One is going to be a screen flow. The other one is going to be an auto launch flow that you're going to use as a reactive screen action for your screen in your screen flow. But let me just open the screen flow first here. So what the screen flow does is it's going to receive, first of all, the opportunity ID as the record ID input here, right? So the record ID here is going to be available for input so that I can use this using a quick action button or I can place it on my lightning record page. So once I do that, I'm getting all the approval submissions that are related to this record ID. So uh, you get approval submission records and the related record ID needs to equal uh, to the record ID of the opportunity. I'm checking whether I found any. If I don't find any, then I'm going to display no results found. I don't need to advance any further. And if I find approval submissions, I'm going to loop through these approval submissions. And it's going to assign the first approval submission and it's going to exit the loop actually. So, well, actually, in any case, this is going to only iterate once because I'm just fetching the first approval submission record, assigning it to a record variable. And then after that, I'm exiting the loop. So even if you have five approval submissions, this loop is going to iterate only once. And the, the whole purpose of the loop here is so that I can extract the first approval submission in the sorted uh, collection of approval submissions. And I can actually use that value as the default choice when the flow is run for the first time. So then I go to my approval screen and on the approval screen, you'll see there are three data tables. So the first data table is going to show me all the approval submissions. And you'll see here under configure rows section that the default selection is the first approval record variable. So then I'm going to add a text field here, which is read only, that's going to show the value of uh, the person who submitted this approval submission. And that data is going to have to come from my screen action auto launch flow. So I'm going to get to that. Let me just skip this for now quickly. And also here for these data tables down below, or both of them, I'm going to use the source is going to come from uh, the screen action auto launch flow. Where is the screen action auto launch flow placed? That's going to be on the bottom of your screen element here. It's called configure screen actions. And under the screen actions, you'll see that there is a 
screen action defined and it's linked to an auto launch flow. You need to have an active auto launch flow that you can link to use as a screen action. You need to pass an input into this flow and it's going to pass back outputs that you define inside your auto launch flow, right? So all these values are going to be available for you to use in your screen flow. As you'll also notice, I have two Booleans here to pass back whether I received any results from my gets in my auto launch flow. So if I found any records, I have found in my experience that when the screen action flow does not pass back any members in the collection, there are no results in the get, uh, the screen flow has a hard time understanding that and then I can't really drive it very well to use it for my conditional visibility. So I'm using those uh, Boolean variables, the output variables to drive my conditional visibility here in my screen flow. Let's go into the auto launch flow and take a look. Open reference flow. So what does our auto launch flow do? Um, we actually need to pass an input into the auto launch flow for it to work. Now this is going to get the approval submission record and the approval submission ID is being passed. So let me just look at the inputs here. Approval. Submission ID variable. So this is defined as input. Uh, it is a text variable. So the approval submission ID will be passed down to this auto launch flow so that the auto launch flow can look up all the related records and pass back the results reactively to the screen flow to be displayed on the screen. So now the approval submission record is going to be get by this auto launch flow, this is what does that. I'm going to get the user based on the user ID on this approval submission record, which I'm going to use to pass back the full name of the user to the screen flow. I'm going to get the approved work items. I'm going to check whether I received any approval work items. If I don't get any results as a result of my get, I'm going to assign to my Boolean variable the value of true. The default value of this Boolean variable is false. So, you know, if I uh, get a null result, I'm going to assign to this Boolean variable, which is labeled is awi null true. And that's going to be used to drive the conditional visibility for my screen flow. Then I'm going to get the approval submission records the detail records, and I'm going to check again via decision whether these are null or not. Again, assign my Boolean variable value, and I need to assign the output variable values here. Remember, when you do your get, Salesforce flow creates a variable for you that you can use within your flow, but if you want to be able to pass the values to another flow using an output variable, you have to create your own variable and mark it available for output. Here, approval, submission detail, collection record variable receives the value of that get, approval work collection record variable, same way. And submitted by full name variable is just a simple text variable that receives the full name of the submitter. And let's check one of them, um, submitted by full name, for example. And you'll see that this one is marked as available. So to be able to add this auto launch flow as a screen action in your screen flow, it needs to be tested and it needs to be activated. Once you do that, you can actually add the flow to your screen action here and all these outputs will be available for you to use in your data table. And 
if you make any changes to your flow, you can refresh your inputs and outputs here. You shouldn't have to recreate everything, but you know, your mileage can vary, so it depends. And you'll see, for example, the results can be referenced this way. This is the syntax. It's called get related screen action. That's what I named it. You don't really have to use the flow name. And then, you know, under that, you'll see dot results and dot submitted by full name variable. This is the naming used by the auto launch flow. For the data table, similarly, get related screen action results and approval work collection record variable. So this is in a nutshell what this functionality provides. I have a blog post that goes with this. Check the blog post on salesforcebreak.com. The link will be in the comments and I'm going to also provide the 2GP unprotected package that you can download and install into your developer orgs or sandboxes so that you can get started on this functionality. Have a great day, folks. Give me a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already.